Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Boy, do I love driving. But sometimes I wonder how I even got my driver's license in the first place. But hey, at least I have my license. Ooh, a letter. Oh, it's from my previous driving instructor. I don't know if I should open this. Maybe I shouldn't have brought up extra credit when I took my driving test. No Free Rides is the episode where Mrs. Puff gives Spongebob his driver's license after he does an extra credit assignment, but only so she won't have to deal with him in school anymore. This episode aired on March 7, 2001, according to this website, and it reveals that the French narrator is actually a character in the show, as he is partially shown at the beginning after Spongebob hits him with his boat. This is also the first time in the series where Spongebob is shown to actually get his boating license, which of course would be taken away from him in some way by the end of the episode. There is episode 30, Sleepy Time from season 1, where he does get his license, but it was only in his dream, and even then, he couldn't get his boating license. Well, to be fair, I never got my boating license either, not even in my own dreams. Fun fact, this episode also has only one of the seven main characters. If we don't count Mrs. Puff as a main character, then Spongebob is the only one of these seven characters to appear in this episode. If you do count Mrs. Puff, then that makes my statements incorrect, so... whatever. I have a lot of fond memories of this episode from when I was younger, and I always really loved watching it and its sister episode, episode 60, I'm Your Biggest Fanatic. But we'll get to all that later. For now, let's watch this episode and see how Spongebob gets his license and loses it this time. So the episode starts up and we're at Mrs. Puff's boating school. The French narrator is saying that if Spongebob doesn't pass this boating exam, he'll be in school for another whole year and then gets hit by Spongebob. Well, to be fair, he kind of had it coming. He had to have been spying on Spongebob. How else would he have known that this was his final boating exam of the year? After hitting the French narrator, Spongebob ended up with negative 224 points. He wanted to make up for those points even though the test was over and caused another accident by crashing through a wall. His final score was only 6 points, but Spongebob needed a total of 600 points to pass the exam. He went from negative 224 to 6 after causing an accident, and you need 600 to pass. I, I don't know how exams are graded at Bikini Bottom. Since Spongebob didn't pass the exam this time, he knew he'd be in Mrs. Puff's class for another year. He ran out of the school, singing about being in boating school longer, but Mrs. Puff could not take the thought of this. So just out of desperation, she decided to give him a chance for extra credit, but just so she doesn't have to see him again. Later on, she gave Spongebob his extra credit assignment, which was a 10-word essay about what he learned in boating school. But Spongebob stated that he learned a lot of things. Did he really though? Mrs. Puff gave him a start by saying, what I learned in boating school is, but Spongebob's pencil kept breaking and Spongebob kept needing to sharpen it, so Mrs. Puff got impatient and gave him a pen. Damn Mrs. Puff, you were clearly going to pass him no matter what he wrote, just give him a few moments. After Spongebob finished what he wrote, he changed his mind and started to have a mental breakdown over trying to figure out what to write. He and Mrs. Puff started to fight a little bit, and Spongebob's paper ended up getting ripped in half. But Mrs. Puff still passes him anyway, and gives Spongebob his license. Spongebob was in absolute shock over finally getting his license, especially since he had even lost it in his dreams before. If he couldn't even dream about it, how could he have known all these things? When Spongebob leaves the school, Mrs. Puff starts to realize what she had just done and starts to imagine Spongebob going around Bikini Bottom hitting other people and causing destruction. But Mrs. Puff shrugged it off because he doesn't have a boat to drive. Later that night, she went home and found Spongebob and his parents surprising her with a cake. They were especially pleased because they were beginning to give up hope on Spongebob getting his license and praised Mrs. Puff for not giving up herself. Spongebob's parents had another surprise in store because they got Spongebob a brand new boatmobile. Spongebob passed out in excitement and his parents took him home. Mrs. Puff freaked out because she thought the whole city would know she let him slide through school and she thought she'd have to move to a new city, change her name, and start a new boating school. Again. Again? Okay, I'm interested now. But she knew she had to stop that from happening again. At Spongebob's house, Spongebob's parents tucked him in and told him not to go near the boat. As soon as his parents left, he snuck out and went to the boat. <laughs> yeah, I remember my first time. Spongebob happily fell asleep in the boat. 
Shortly after, Mrs. Puff arrives in a ski mask, makes a balloon animal, and drives away. But then Spongebob wakes up and he and Mrs. Puff see each other. He accidentally sprays himself with pepper spray and Mrs. Puff kicks him out of the boat. But Spongebob still keeps up with her and grabs onto the boat. Mrs. Puff drives through obstacles to try to shake him off, including giant clams, cheese graters, and educational television. <laughs> okay, that might not have been an obstacle, but I don't blame him for being afraid of educational television. Right as Mrs. Puff thought she got rid of Spongebob, she turns on the radio and Spongebob comes out through the radio and they start fighting again right in front of the police. Spongebob finds out that he was fighting Mrs. Puff the whole time and then the boat crashes into the car. Okay, the cops had so much time to get out of the car. Mrs. Puff was thrown in jail as a result. When she and Spongebob are talking, Mrs. Puff stated that Spongebob wasn't ready to drive yet and Spongebob had to give up his license. Mrs. Puff was talking about another class with another teacher, but Spongebob says nobody other than her can teach him. He then says the warden will let her go early if Mrs. Puff gives the warden free driving lessons, and the episode ends. So that was No Free Rides, and that is an amazing episode. I have a lot to say about it. I'll start off by talking about my childhood nostalgia. When I was young, I asked my parents when I would be eligible to start learning how to drive, and they would tell me 16. So every year after my birthday, I would always sing to myself Spongebob's little I'm gonna get my driver's license ditty and replace the one more year, one more year line based on how old I am. When I turned 10, I would say six more years. I said five more years when I turned 11 and so on. It was just a little jingle I sang to remind myself when I could take the driver's test. But unfortunately, my parents were often busy and while I got my learner's permit fairly quickly after I turned 16, it took a while for me to get my license. I also didn't pass it on my first try, and I finally got my license shortly after I turned 17. At least it was before I turned 18. That story aside, I really love this episode. My favorite part was always the part where Spongebob went through the giant clams and cheese graters and his reaction to the educational television sign. I sometimes replayed that scene over and over and over again when I watched it on DVD, and it always had me in tears. That scene never got old for me. There are also a lot of other hilarious scenes too. I also really like when Spongebob started to freak out over writing the essay and the struggle he and Mrs. Puff had. I love Spongebob hitting the French narrator at the beginning, and Mrs. Puff's imagination sequence of Spongebob causing havoc in Bikini Bottom. And that's only scratching the surface. There's a lot of fun character moments too. Some of them are when Spongebob's dad kisses Mrs. Puff's hand for an extended period of time, Spongebob's interactions with his parents in his bedroom, and the conversations between Spongebob and Mrs. Puff when she was stealing the boatmobile. I also think the animation is pretty good too. There are some great animation moments here, like the sky throughout the action sequence, Mrs. Puff's fantasy scene, and the opening shot of the boating school. I also really like Spongebob's remains after getting sliced by the cheese graters. He's just four yellow lines that can talk somehow. It's so funny. I also like this painting in Mrs. Puff's house. It's literally an infinity loop of her walking into her house at nighttime looking surprised. Speaking of Mrs. Puff, something else I really like is that we learn a lot about Mrs. Puff here. There are some actual things we learn and some implied things as well. For example, we see her house for the first time, and we find out that she knows how to make balloon animals. We also get a bit of a backstory for her. She originally did not live in Bikini Bottom. It's heavily implied that she let another student at her last boating school graduate, even though he or she wasn't ready, and bad things happened, so she moved to Bikini Bottom, changed her name, and started a new boating school. She doesn't say the name of the last place she lived at, and she also didn't outright say that what happened in the last town was that she passed another student when he or she wasn't ready. When she says, no, not again, it does indeed confirm that she did move away from her last town and change her name. And even though it wasn't officially confirmed that whatever happened last time was that she gave a student their license who then caused havoc, it is the most likely scenario, and unless it's actually revealed what happened in a future episode, we won't know for sure. Regardless, we still learn a lot more about Mrs. Puff in this episode, and that's just always nice to see. It makes her that much more of a fun and interesting character. With all these positives, you're probably expecting me to nitpick, but that's not really worth talking about right now. There was nothing about this episode I really questioned after watching it, except for Mrs. Puff's history of course. More specifically, there isn't anything I wondered, 
why did this happen or since when was this an issue even though it was supposed to be for the story. I love this episode so much that even nitpicking it won't really help me not seem biased. But for the hell of it, I'm gonna try. If I have any nitpicks to say, it would be, when I was younger, I was hoping to see Spongebob encounter the educational TV like he did with the giant clams and cheese graters. And when we didn't see Spongebob hit the educational television, I was a little disappointed. But that's literally my only gripe. And it was so minor, it probably wasn't even worth mentioning. And I didn't even talk about everything I like here. I love when Mrs. Puff goes, Blankety! Blankety! Blank! In the classroom. I love when the cops go from bored to scared witless in a second. And I really love when Spongebob comes out of the radio during the chase scene. The comedy, the action sequences, the character moments. I could honestly go on all day. But I think I've gushed enough about this episode for now. This episode has always been one of my favorites from season 2 as a child, and it still is to this day. No Free Rides is an outstanding episode. There's just so much to love about it. The action sequences, the character moments, and the countless funny scenes throughout. It's just an absolute classic. It's also great getting to know more about the characters we didn't know prior, and I love everything we get to know about Mrs. Puff in this episode, which just adds to how great it really is. But now, I think it's time for me to read the letter. Oh, I need to get my license back. I wasn't ready. Yep, I should not have brought up extra credit to my driving instructor. Well, you'll have to catch me to get me to give up my license. <laughs>